Earlier this month, a bill sponsored by Colorado Republican Doug Lamborn passed the House. Now, this bill is called uh, H.R. 1965, and it's named the Federal Land Jobs and Energy Security Act. Now, just sit there and think about the name for a minute. Whenever they, whenever Republicans comes up with a really crappy bill, and you'll see what's in it, they always put like the word jobs in it, security, or freedom. And it always means the opposite, by the way. It always means like the opposite. It's, it's really Orwellian and kind of fascinating that they can get away with that. But that's Republican spinning for you, man. So what does this do? Well, according to the National Resources Defense Council, it would, quote, direct federal lands be managed for the primary purpose of energy development rather than for stewardship, balancing multiple uses, including recreation. So basically, it's privatizing federal land for oil. Oh, oil and gas drilling. Federal state parks, you don't need that. Federal land? No, 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 no. We can drill on that. We can go, go to, we can, we can uh, get oil from that. Well, you want to have a picnic on federal land? Okay, you can do it next to the oil rig. <laughs> that, that's essentially what they're doing. It's privatizing federal land for oil drilling. It also opens up the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge for drilling. It's those animals up in the refuge. Why do we need the refuge? We need oil. We need to make more oil. Energy independence. Except that, do you know that most of the oil that we produce, we ship out? It's not being used here at home. It's being shipped out to be sold on the world market. Why do you think gas prices haven't went down? Other than, of course, the speculators. But... That's also a, a, another part of why gas prices are so high. And you, know, you never seem to hear a whole lot about that, which is kind of funny. You never hear about the oil speculators, but it's always Obama's fault. Or it's always the Democrats' fault. Or it's that we don't have enough oil. No, we're pumping up. Do you know that we actually are producing more oil than we did back in the Bush years? America is producing more oil, but we're also selling it on the world market because it's not actually American oil it's BP's oil because we're allowing these private companies to go and extract that from the ground and then America will buy it it's kind of sad really what we have going on here but anyway more details about this bill and get this it sets deadlines for the Bureau of Land Management to approve drilling permits now, they have 60 days to look into health safety effects. Okay, so before they, before they issue a permit, they will look into the health and safety effects of the surrounding area, right? Well, what happens after 60 days? If it doesn't get approved in 60 days, what happens? Well, surely they have to probably have to file again, right? Wrong. It actually gets automatically approved, rubber stamped. If they don't do anything on it for 60 days, automatic approval. Go ahead and drill. Yeah, we're not done with our investigations, but you know what? Go ahead and drill anyway. But not only that. But Well, first, I just want to say that this is, this is a BP's wet dream. This bill right here. Oh, well, we want to drill somewhere? Well, you know, the Bureau of Land Management... The Republicans are Republican lackeys in Congress. Cut your funding. And so you've had to lay off people. And now you can't keep up with all the drilling permits. And now with, if this law passes, if you can't get to our, our permit within 60 days, automatic rubber stamp approval. We can go ahead and drill, baby, drill. Oh, man, this is such a giveaway to oil. This is such a big giveaway to, to big oil. But not only that, and this is the most egregious part of this bill at all. You thought that part was bad. What's really bad is this part. 
Now, if a citizen feels that they will be adversely affected by oil and gas sales or permitting decisions, the citizen must pay $5,000 fee to file an appeal. A $5,000 fee for an appeal. Do you know people that the, the, the farmers out there in, say, Pennsylvania, where there's a natural gas boom going on right now, a lot of hydraulic fracturing going on? Do those people have an extra five grand sitting around so they can appeal if a natural gas well moves and tries to move into the area? No. No, this is effectively shutting those people out. Oh, if you don't have money, we're not going to listen to you. If you have money, we'll listen to you, but most likely we'll still side with the oil companies and the gas companies because they have so much money. Because they can hire an army of lawyers. But hey, at least this $5,000... Well, at least we'll listen to you for five grand. Doesn't mean we're going to do anything, but we'll at least listen to you. What a crock. That is really, that is essentially shutting down people's rights to have their voices heard. I mean, what happened to, what happened to free speech? Well, it's turned into whoever has the most money has the most speech. That's what our system has turned into. And it's really, really sad and really disgusting. Now, H.R. 2728 puts states in charge of fracking on federal lands within that state's borders. Now, once again, if you're Pennsylvania or, or any other place that's having a natural gas boom right now, if you put that under the state's control, what do you think the state's going to do? Open that shit up. Drill, baby, drill. Because you know why? Because it does mean more jobs for that area. You do have more jobs, yes. There's a lot more jobs. Not necessarily. Can you get the same number of jobs if you start putting up windmills? Probably. It depends. But you better believe those states are going to do it. Of course. Why wouldn't they? So immediately you're saying, hey, federal government, this is federal land and this is protected land by the federal government. But you know what? It's within our state's borders. And there'd be natural gas under those rocks. So we're going to go get it. And if this bill passes, you can't do anything about it. Another bill, H.R. 1900, states that the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission would have only one year to consider a completed permit application for a pipeline. Now, can you think of any pipelines that have taken a year or more to get approval? That would be the Keystone XL pipeline. You know, the one that's supposed to transport the uh, tar sands crude all the way to Texas to get shipped out to China. Oh, what, you think we're going to actually use that oil coming from uh, Alberta? No. No, it's designed to go through America, down to Texas, and out to the world market. Keystone XL. Now, under this law, Keystone XL, rubber stamp after a year. Go ahead and build it. Now, a lot of energy, uh, a lot of proponents of these bills are saying, but guys, we'll be energy independent. You're not going to be energy independent. We're already producing more oil than we ever have. Are we energy independent? No, because we're selling it all. And BP and ExxonMobil are the most profitable entities on earth. No other corporation, no other company has ever made as much money as ExxonMobil has made. I mean, come on. And the people that are sponsoring this this in Congress, notice most of them are Republicans. Well, all of them are Republicans, but it has some Democratic support too. There's one more thing. Other agencies would only have three months to sign off on associated permits required by the Clean Water and Clean Air Act. Oh, you got three months? Approving this stuff takes a long time because you have to do the studies on the effects. And that takes more than three months. It takes more. In some cases, it takes more than a year. How long has President Obama been sitting on Keystone XL? For a long, long time. Trying to find out that, hey, you know, is it going to be safe? It really comes down to the money. Now, the oil and gas industry, they've given so much money 
to our members of Congress, mostly to Republicans. And that's why you get laws like these. That's why you get these pro-fracking, pro-oil bills and anti-people bills. You know that they can actually take your land through eminent domain. If, a gas, an, oil, if an oil or gas company wants it, they can, they can apply to get your, your land through eminent domain. They can use the power of the government to take your land because they have bought the government. The government now works for them, not for you. Now, luckily at least in these cases, these bills are facing a presidential veto. Thank goodness President Obama is actually doing something sort of right on this. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Please leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and share with your friends. If you want to see more, go to our channel at youtube.com slash TYTNation. And if you really want to support the show, support this channel, go to our fundraising campaign at www.patreon.com slash tytnation. The website is in the description below. Thank you guys, and keep watching.